In this episode, I will be discussing acoustical chambers. This is Sound Noise Acoustics Engineering Podcast, episode number 13, brought to you by Sound Solutions, an independent acoustical consulting firm at ssacoustical.com. I'm Bill Holiday. Thank you for joining me on this episode. Uh, we've had several inquiries about constructing acoustics testing labs. And generally, these requests have come from manufacturing facilities looking at it, testing equipment. Uh, and there have been varying degrees of specificity of what criteria they want to meet. Some of them have just said, hey, here's the dimensions. We need uh, an acoustic chamber. Some have come back with a lot of detail as to how much noise reduction they need all the different uh, factors that are involved. So I'm going to run through this. Uh, some of the different factors, I don't know why I have six, seven different factors. One of them, dimensions, inner and outer wall dimensions. The entire wall with this acoustical absorption will be thick, especially if you're testing down to lower frequencies. It's important to consider that thickness in your design. The larger the room and the lower the, frequency, the lower the frequencies you can test down to. And larger rooms, they say you want to take the volume of the thing you're testing, multiply that by 200. You want the volume of your room to at least be that big. So, um, yeah, they could be pretty big rooms. But that, that can be costly when you have thick, uh, expensive construction in a large uh, test room. So... If you're working on, on getting down into lower frequencies, generally you're going to need a thicker wall design and you're going to need larger, um, physically thicker absorption, acoustical absorption. Noise reduction needed. So you can measure the noise that's currently there where the chamber is going to be located and it's best to do it in third octave bands or octave bands or get some something more than just DBA. You want to know... How much do you need to reduce the noise in the different frequencies? And, uh, you know, make sure it's kind of a worst case noises are going on. Uh, and so you could test that. Uh, if you're not sure what noises will be there, then you need to model it. Just know what kind of equipment and you can uh, estimate what the existing noises will be there. Components. So you got the walls. Sometimes you have windows. Sometimes, I mean, you're going to have a door, some way to get in and out. That can be the most, uh, the weakest link. It can be either be the most expensive component or uh, a place where you could have noise coming through before noise through other areas. So you can make a super thick concrete block walls, and if you have a weak door or weak windows that noise is coming through, poor sealing uh, seals around the doors, then that's going to hurt your system. So it's important to, uh, the other thing with walls, you, you can use cheap construction materials, drywall, block, and acoustic foam, fiberglass in the air cavities, and, and come up with a good sound-reducing construction, whereas doors, windows, you might need special sound-rated um, you know, components. So with doors, you want to know what size. Do you need forklift entry? How far do you need it to open? What kind of seals can you, um, are you going to need? Do you need to push, you know, pressure seal it and lock it down? Uh, perimeter magnetic seals. Um, and you may need a door that's rated. So you're buying it saying, I need 50 dB no reduction, um, you know, rated door and get the active noise reduction. Visibility, it adds cost and it also will reduce the amount of absorption you can put in the room. So keep the windows to a minimum. If you need them, you need them, but keep them as small and as, as little as you can. Also consider the mullion, you know, what's holding that window in place because that could be a weak path as well. HVAC, uh, heating, air conditioning, ventilation, um, know about the paths. There's two issues with ventilation. One's the noise from the system. Do you have a fan running? What's the noise from that fan? The other is, is noise breaking into that ductwork, um, supply or return duct? So you may need silencers, you may need lining, 
may need round ducts so noise won't break in. All going to depend on the environment you're in um, and what equipment you're using and how low you need the levels to get. But that's a that can ruin your system not considering the HVAC. Vibration isolation. The entire room can be floated on isolators if needed. You can put some compressed fiber, spring dampened system, rubber isolators, all depending on the frequency and amount of vibration you need to reduce. But that can, especially when you're doing very precise, low noise tests, uh, vibration could be an issue in some environments for sure. Lighting, cables, electric power, videos, floor finish, steel rods or things to hang on, those are all planning considerations. Um, if you need them, specify them. It's better to do them in the design phase than try to deal with them later. Testing after construction. The sound booth should provide free field conditions. So room modes, these standing waves, can uh, wreak havoc on your testing, could influence your testing. So they should not exist in the room. Standing waves can be detected real easy by looking at frequency versus the amount of decay you get at each frequency per doubling or per, you know, as, as a function of distance. So normally you're going to get 6 dB reduction per doubling of distance. If you plot that decay versus frequency, standing waves you'll show will stand out very apparently. You want to make sure the absorption is adequate to uh, take care of any of those standing waves. Um, ambient noise levels, ambient vibration levels, those should be specified um, so that you have a criteria to aim for. To, and the criteria normally is going to be in third octave bands. Duration is going to be an issue. Is it an LEQ, like an average level, an L max, L min, L I don't know, 95 or L1, just just be specific on what you're looking for and how, um, you know, what needs to be met. What's the goal? All right, that's all I have for episode 13. Thank you. Next podcast, I think we're going to be doing HUD noise studies. Thank you for listening or watching the Sound Noise Acoustics Engineering Podcast. Hey, we do have uh, new offices in Mexico um, actually, that's where a lot of these requests have been coming for acoustic chambers. So uh, keep us in mind. Uh, we provide you with knowledge and resource to address acoustic issues. I'm Bill Holiday, PE. This is a podcast that is brought to you by Sound Solutions, independent acoustical consultants at ssacoustical.com. As always, I appreciate your feedback. You can leave a comment. You can uh, email me. We have contact information at ssacoustical.com, Facebook, um, you can call, Twitter, I don't know what else, LinkedIn. I'm trying to get active on LinkedIn. Um, but thanks for your interest. And if you like this, you know, give it a rating, review. I'll try to do more. All right, take care.